morning, morning millennials. millennials. Welcome back to the morning toast and ha- no, my God, sorry. We need a Monday <laughs> song. We need a song for Monday to get welcome us in the mood. Welcome to the morning toast. Welcome, 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 welcome to the morning toast. Happy Monday. Hope everyone had a blessed, relaxing, and recharging weekend. Hey, Jax, how you doing? I'm darn good. Excited to be back with my girly girl. Excited to hear about your weekend because I think your weekend looked really fun. Whereas mine was filled with mama tings and a sick bebe. So How's World Dini? Yeah, today's episode is delayed because the most important thing on the planet needed our attention. He had to go to the doctor. I heard he had a fever. Give us, tell us everything. So he had a fever all weekend, in and out. It was pretty low grade. It never hit, you know, the the scary numbers. Scary. But then it turned like the, that the amount of days that he was feverish was becoming the concerning thing. Concerning. So bright and early this morning, I took him to the doctor to make sure that everything was okay. And if not, to treat whatever was bothering him. And he's okay. It's just a little virus. It will pass. You just have to keep treating the symptoms. So I'm glad for that. But yes, it definitely backed up our schedule. And it took over my whole weekend. So I don't have that much exciting news to report other than that I read so much. And whenever we do our book talk, can't wait to share. So we have a crazy episode for you guys today. Obviously, we have so much to catch up on from the weekend. Last night was the House of the Dragon episode that literally like like changed my life. I dreamt of incest like it was beyond. And Monday is usually our uh, Unburden Yourselves Day. I just feel like today's going to be really long and we're already a little delayed. We're going to switch Unburden Yourselves to Tuesday so we can just have more balanced episodes because I don't want to be rushed today. I want to talk about everything. I also absolutely have to give the people an update on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because it's low-key gotten so crazy. And like we have not done a recap in two months. I'm totally caught up. Um, and I'll dive into it in the TV recap, but I just want to say, like, the energy I will be bringing is justice for Kathy. So if you don't agree with that, get the fuck out. Cool. And I'm caught up on Southern Charm. Good. And We're covering all our bases. Covering all our bases. It's just such an enjoyable show. Really, even though there's no drama, I just enjoy these people. I'm even enjoying Patricia. That's how great wow. it is. Wow. Yep. Coming around wow. on Miss Pat. Wow, Jackie. Wow. I know. Um... So I had a fabulous weekend. I knew it was going to be fabulous because we have been planning Brian's baby shower for yesterday, Sunday, um, for a few months. And it finally was the day. And it was honestly like, it was giving Andy's baby shower, you know? Like it was not like other baby showers. We had drag queens. It was lit. We had spritz. We had housewives. We had a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Like it was, no, I wish. Lema Bowie. She is kind of like, a really big deal and she's like Brian's like mentor um so she flew all the way from Ghana and it was she made she first of all she made him a quilt like for the baby I saw oh my god it was so like I literally the whole day was either like dancing or crying like it was so emotional but it was also like it was draining like to be so emotional for so many hours she made a speech it was first of all just to hear like a Nobel Peace Prize winner speak is like a once in a lifetime opportunity and she's so close with Brian and and her whole family is and it was so it was so sweet and she like made him matching outfits for him and the baby like a pair of shorts and a shirt for both of them did she upstage your speech so I did request that Lema speak after me <laughs> because I was not um gonna follow a Nobel Peace Prize winner when I'm like borderline moronic with a handmade so- quilt yeah no like it just wasn't fair so like I was like funny goofy silly and everyone enjoyed it and then she went so it was like the perfect progression it would have been so sad if I had to go after her what was the thesis of your speech just that like Brian is like a dad to me like he's always like literally taking care of everyone and like I think a lot of people and he said in his speech I vlogged the whole thing by the way it's up on the Patreon I got my whole speech in there Brian's whole speech in there all the celebs who were there I was like being thirsty um there was it was star-studded yeah, Brian was basically like, you know, people have been saying to me, like, aren't you nervous? And for a moment, he was like, you know, is this going to be weird not to have like a traditional mom for my son? But first of all, and the whole party was women. I, um, I think Ben was literally one of three straight guys there. He was like, I'm just surrounded by so many wonderful women and I have such a great mom and like I'm not even worried about it at all. And I feel so prepared because my friends are like toddlers, like Claudia and John. And it was honestly so true because I said in my speech, we both really said the same thing. I was like, Brian's literally our dad. That's so And he sweet. was like, my friends are literally my children. So I'm ready. Like, I'm not even nervous. I know that this is what I'm going to be great at. That's beautiful. Claudia, that's beautiful. 
Thank you. I did, you know, of course, have to sing in my speech. What'd I sing a sing? Tony Braxton. I sing a Tony Braxton song that Brian and I love. Um, we're always saying, like, Brian, you mean the world to me. Or just like, Jackie, you looking so beautiful, like, it truly means the world. We're always saying that. And it's You Mean the World to Me by Tony Braxton. And I, I said, like, Brian, ever since I met him, like, he's really taught me so much. He's showed me the world. Yes. And, it means the, and it means the world to me, in the words of Tony Braxton. And then I sang, You mean the world to me. You are my everything. It was really beautiful. Nice. I'm excited to watch the vlog. I want to like, I like to watch all your vlogs on my TV. It's a whole production. Uh, but I had a sick bebe, so I get like I, a 24-hour you get Leeway. all the time you need. Thank you. And and Harry loves watching your vlogs too. So I want to wait till he can enjoy it. So Margaret, we, we had it at Margaret Joseph's house. And I feel like her house has been a conversation on the show for a long time. And I just have to say, like, it was unbelievable. If I ever have, like, a home, I will be hiring Margaret as my decorator and Joe as my contractor. Like, I, like there's, like, a certain style that, like, it's like I really like it, but I could never put it together myself. It's like these kind of crazy patterns, and I would never walk into a store and get it, but I wish that I would because it looked so chic. Her house is gorgeous. Yeah, really that, gorgeous. That's what I'm learning about, like, buying furniture and doing design on a house. It's like not – I know it feels like everything you should be so obsessed with, but and, – and it's really hard to do this when you're buying furniture, but, like, sometimes you won't be obsessed with it till you see it with see everything it else. Like it, sometimes you have to get a couple things that you like, and but they really work and complement the things that you are obsessed with. Yeah. It, it was so beautiful, and her and Lexi really did the majority of the planning. Like, there was a host committee, and we met one time, and then Margaret and Lexi literally did everything. And it was so well done. There was a mentalist there who was blowing people's fucking minds. Like, literally, there was a girl there, and he was like, think of the name of your first kiss. And so she's thinking it. He's touching her finger and, like, saying letters and just, like, reading her facial cues. And then he writes down on a post-it, John Sullivan, and she's like... The mentalist is like, what was the name of your first kiss? And she said, John Sullivan. And literally, Jackie, the entire room started screaming. Like, it was crazy. Did he do anything to you? Yes. He had Margot think of the most random celebrity that she could think of. It's in the vlog. And he touched her finger, said a bunch of letters, numbers, read her mind. And it was Queen Elizabeth. Okay, well. So in Margot, in his defense, like, Margot, he said, choose the most random person. She's literally not random, especially right now. No, couldn't be more relevant, top of mind. Yeah. Okay, that's a Margot error. A hundred percent. How is our dear sister? She's good. I was really with her the whole weekend. Friday night, you know, it's fashion week, so, like, everyone was out and about. And, like, I've been trying to, like, not go out as much because I've been just fucking hating being hungover. But, like, it was fabulous. Like, the people were out. I wanted to see and be seen and see and be seen. So on Friday night, I went out, and actually the craziest thing happened. Me and Margot, we were just, like, drinking with a bunch of the girlies, and Kendall Jenner and Devin Booker walked in. And so obviously, like, the whole restaurant was quaking. Um, but they were also quaking because Ben Simmons was at this restaurant. So literally, the whole restaurant was, like, silent as they were just watching this interaction between Kendall, her man, and her ex-man. Um, nothing happened, and then eventually it got boring. Like, watching celebrities, like, just be pretty and famous is low-key fucking boring. yeah. We're not really big on people watching as people. Yeah, like that's the thing about celebrities. It's like, honestly, like they're kind of boring in person. They're just people. Because they're just people. They're yeah. just people. They're just people. Um, but it was fabulous. Like, you know, the city is, is in a good, it's in good form. You know, lots going on. It's been really looking quite fabulous. All the fashion Everyone's in content. town. There's fabulous parties. Like, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like you and Margot were right there in the mix all weekend. Yes. And I Saturday night, we just went out again with the girlies. I saw, you know, some of the out of town influencer girlies, the sabotage girlies. Um, I saw Shannon. Thank God I needed a Shannon fix. And it was, it was even better than I remembered. I'm so happy for you. No, and I'm like wasted in the bathroom. I'm like, Shannon, you need to start a Patreon. I would buy it in a second. <laughs> you really would. <laughs> no, I would. And like, Shannon's so fabulous. And like, she should start like a vlog YouTube. But like, she shouldn't give that shit away for free. I'm like, Shannon, start a Patreon. I think it's a good idea. That is a good idea. And she was like drunk and she was just like indulging me. She was like, yeah, totally. I should. <laughs> She's probably like, what's Patreon? No, and she's like, can we stop talking about work? No. You can never, but that's just because you're a mogul and like you can never turn it off. I'm sure mogul she understands. Mogul energy. I'm sure she so understands. So honestly, 
waking up this morning I, I do not feel like it was the weekend this was like a, a booked and busy weekend I didn't have any time to read or lay in bed and that stunk but it was fun being a fabulous socialite you know every now and then yeah and it sounds like like I feel like so often you go out and it's just not fun and it's not fabulous I feel like this weekend was that and so I'm happy yeah, that's for you. the thing that's the thing and I think part of the reason why I've like taken a step back from going out so much is because like I'll go out till the cows come home if it's a fabulous outing but I just feel like lately there aren't that many fabulous outings maybe I'm not getting invited to fabulous places or people are getting less fabulous I think you get invited to some fabulous stuff and it's kind of sometimes disappointing I think other times you do go to like the opening of an envelope it's weird what you like choose to go to because it's just like if you're in the mood to go out and I used to do this all the time too when in my heyday it's like well I'm going out tonight so whatever's happening is where I'm going but it's like oh yeah. tonight's not really a great night like you might know it's like my my home. personal vibe doesn't always match up with my schedule yes agreed yeah that's so true I feel but this weekend it did for you yeah no it was great I feel tired but I feel you know I feel like a socialite and that's special that is special I'm happy for you how was your weekend my weekend was just really tiring, just on mom duty, like, all weekend. Never got out of my pajamas. Uh, Sounds amazing. I, well, it was, like, it was a lot of work to have a sick one, little one. But he was, he was good and sweet, and it just meant a lot of naps on mom, which meant a lot of reading time for mom. Oh, that's good. So it was good, and I was able to stick to my diet, and I'm happy for that. Yes, I'm very excited. So now I'm like a week into eating really, really healthy. well, healthy. My, the uh, diet that I'm doing is just like, obviously, you know, not indulging, but low sodium to no sodium if you can do it. It's really hard. Uh, no oil, no butter, no sugar. That is no the plan salt. that you were. That's, that's pretty a, good. Right. That's a plan you were put on when you went on your retreat when everyone thought you were like uh, pregnant and in rehab. Or in rehab for, uh, for alcohol. Yeah. Right. But you were just lowering your sodium intake. I was lowering. I was in rehab. For, I was overdosing for sodium. on sodium. Yeah. Uh, so that's the Pritikin lifestyle. If you can do it, it's hard to like find things to eat like because there aren't, everything has sodium in it. Look at the Salt, back of yeah. every th at nutrition products. Look at the back. Sodium through the roof. So it's hard to get to zero sodium and that's not even possible really. But it makes everything like less tasty. But you can eat a lot of really good nutrient dense foods and not be super hungry. It's just kind of bland and boring. Yeah, it actually sounds like a diet I would like because like, oh, it has no flavor. Give it to me. Yeah, and you can eat a lot of brown rice. <gasps> and you can eat potatoes, potatoes, but just like boiled or baked with no oil, right. no, no salt, butter, no cheese, no sour. Actually, you could have fat free sour cream. What about butter? No butter. You could margarine. No margarine. You could maybe spritz it like once with I can't believe it's not butter spray. You know, let's talk about I can't believe it's not butter spray. I'm so glad you brought it up because honestly, I can't believe it's not butter. Like I can. It tastes it's like chemicals. Crack. It's so good. Literally, like that is one of probably I think when like years from now when somebody's studying like toxic diet culture, the rise like in the early 2000s, like I can't believe it's not butter spray is the cornerstone product of the toxic diet culture and I love it so much like I think it's so good I spread that shit on everything popcorn rice cakes like I think it's better than real butter because it's like good luck spreading butter you yeah, know because it's spritzable <laughs> good luck spreading butter seriously I think that it's a miracle product and I love it and I, I really I cannot believe it's not butter Zach puts it on everything too I think it's, it's like so good you should only use a few spritzes when when you do you barely taste it and if you use a more spritzes then it defeats the purpose of it being a low calorie product and do you know why I really like it because it's fully made of chemicals there's no food in it like you could literally buy one and keep it in your fridge for five years and it would never expire because it's fully uh, the one in my kitchen I think I got when I moved in yeah it's pretty scary Zach likes it so much that the butter that he like spreadable butter he buys I can't believe it's not butter brand I completely agree I it's a brand I can trust <laughs> I love this honestly I have to make the TikTok I love this man and I would do anything. I love that butter so much. You know what butter I like? What? Breakstone. You know what butter I actually think is like the best butter? Mm. It's like the little packets like of like French butter that you get at like restaurants. Like those are really. Yeah, if you hold it over a candle, you can melt it. Uh huh. Mm. I love a little salt in my butter. Butter's so good. I can't have any of those things right now, but That's... it's fun talking about it. No, I bet it's like so fun. But I can have oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Tell me about that. I can have oatmeal with a stevia. 
and some Ooh. cinnamon. Oh, crazy girl. <laughs> <laughs> Oatmeal is actually great because it is really filling and it's zero sodium. Mm, yum. Like it's not going to be like the tastiest thing, but when I, you'll at least feel full when you're done. You yeah. Can move on yeah, with yeah, your yeah, day yeah. and not like be thinking about like food for that minute. There's just like, you know what I'm thinking about? Like there are so many like brands. I can't believe it's not butter is one of them that like really were a part of like that rise of like diet products. Like, and I think about like ones we had in our house. Like I consider like in the same category, like cream of wheat and like Fig Newtons. Yeah, cream of wheat is an interesting product. Good luck making cream of wheat correctly because you'll never fucking do it. And what is it? And what is the right consistency? No, for like cream okay, of wheat? so the brand is cream of wheat. The product, the product is. It's not grits and it's not oatmeal. It's like somewhere in between. It's literally creamy wheat. It's creme de la wheat. <laughs> it's creme de la wheat. Yeah, that's... It's such a good question. Like, what is it? I don't know. It's like porridge. It's porridge, for sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so that's the, ty- ta- that's the toxic diet culture segment of today's show. Except got this, great the diet school. that I'm on is not toxic whatsoever. No. It encourages no. you to eat a lot just of nutrient-dense foods. So veggies, protein, and then whole grains, brown rice, rice. legumes. If you want pasta, mm. whole wheat pasta. If I'm at like a wedding that has like different sections of catered food, like you will find me at the legume station, you know? Will you? Legume, yeah, it's like. Beans. Rice. Beans. Oh. It's not like lentils? No, I think, uh, well lentils actually won so pretty and approved. Um, oh, thank God. But legumes are beans. You know, I don't mind a lentil. I don't mind a lentil. Lentils are... I like yentils. Mm, I like (laughs) yerentil. I like yeruncle. Who doesn't? (laughs) Um, Okay, we have five stories, and I want to get into them because I need to talk about House of the Dragon. Like, I... It's killing me not to... House of the big D. House of the D. House of the Ds. Literally. (laughs) Literally. So I say we dive in. Let's dive in. I also need to talk about the queen. Like I'll be talking about the queen. I think you can guarantee I'll be having one like royal update story till the end of September. Um, Wow. Because like right now she's driving through the country. Right. She hasn't been laid to rest yet. No. So then we'll like be talking about her till the funeral. And then obviously the funeral is going to be a big deal. So um, just get ready. And I'm going to keep talking about her because I miss her. So, you know, this is our first Monday without the Queen. And it doesn't get easier. No. And you can feel it, too. It's in the air. Mm-hmm. Totally. <sighs> so without further ado, do, 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 here are the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. And today's episode is brought to you by the Clinique Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter. If you have dark spots, it can often feel like a vicious cycle. As soon as one fades, another one pops up. So break the cycle with the Clinique Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter. This powerful serum works on melanin-rich to fair skin, and it helps visibly correct dark spots such as acne marks while protecting from future discoloration. 94% of people demonstrated an improvement in radiance and visible tone, including acne marks, in just eight weeks. You can see a 39% visible reduction in dark spots in almost 12 weeks. If you have dark spots, I get them during the summer a lot. You know how unbelievably difficult they are to get rid of, and like once you do, boom, another one. So I really like this Clinique product. I feel like Clinique is a brand you can really trust. I think they've been around for a long time. It's a trustworthy brand. And there's effective effects because, like I said, 94% of people demonstrated an improvement. And it's developed by dermatologists, which is also fabulous. So you can get the Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter today. It's available at Clinique.com. That's the Even Better Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter available at Clinique.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Thuma. Thuma, 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 let me be your thuma. Thuma, 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 let me be your thuma. Your thuma bed literally arrived a few weeks ago, right? Arrived a few weeks ago. Yes, it's in Snitch's room and I assembled it. So easy to assemble. Like I know a lot of people have probably seen the targeted ads for Thuma because we talk about it so much and your phone is listening to you. So Thuma, 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 you'll see the ads today. And they're like... Their whole thing, aside from being like gorgeous and wonderful furniture, is that a lay person can put it together. And I'm here to tell you that truly a lay person can put it together, which is huge for big furniture. It's huge because it can be so 
frustrating to be setting up a bed or really any piece of furniture that doesn't have you in mind. And the bed by Thuma is handcrafted from eco-friendly, high-quality upcycled wood, and you'll find beautiful, unique variations in natural grains. The design is very minimalist. It features Japanese joinery, and it helps elevate any space. Very supportive for your mattress. It's breathable, and it's made to naturally minimize noise and create space. It's made for how you live, so it's backed with a lifetime warranty. It ships right to your door in three easy boxes, and it takes about five minutes to assemble with no tools required. Along with the bed, Thuma also offers other essentials for the bedroom, like the mattress, the nightstand, and the side table, and they all perfectly complement the bed. They also work with one tree planted, so they plant one tree for every bed and nightstand sold. All of their essentials are Green Guard Gold certified as well. Create that feeling of checking into your favorite boutique hotel suite, but at home with the bed by Thuma. And now go to thuma.co slash toast to receive a $25 credit towards your purchase of the bed, plus free shipping in the continental U.S. Go to thuma.co slash toast. That's T-H-U-M-A dot C-O slash toast for a $25 credit. Great. Okay, our first story, Queen update segment. First, news of Queen's funeral details have been revealed. So for everybody who's curious, here's what's in store for all of us. The state funeral of Her Majesty the Queen will take place at Westminster Abbey on Monday, September 19th at 1100 hours BST. So I think that's... British Central Time? Yeah, no, no. So if it's it's 11 o'clock there, 11 o'clock a.m., I think we're five or six hours behind which would make yeah. it five or six a.m the thing about like being an american obsessed with the royals is they love a mid-morning affair and like when i was in high school i was so obsessed with william and kate's wedding that i actually woke up at five in the morning to watch and i was allowed to not go to school like i was obsessed but it's low-key fucking annoying it is but you know what harry does have a wake up around five to six a.m I usually go back to sleep after it, but maybe on September 19th, I'll just, what if I just turn Pay on respects. Sky News? Yeah, what shout out guess? to the Sky News Apple TV app because trying to get news from another country is low key, not easy. No, low key. Low key, no bueno. I drink every time Claudia says hello low key. It's, I'm so young. It's hello low key, bruv. <laughs> okay, prior um, to the state funeral um, though, Queen's still on her, as Charles said, her last journey prior to the state funeral the queen will lie in state in westminster hall for four days to allow the public to pay their respects according to the palace the queen's coffin is currently resting in the ballroom at balmoral castle and will travel travel to edinburgh on sunday it will then rest in the throne room at the palace of holly Rod house until monday afternoon so right now she is at holly rod house no it says she's at balmoral that was on sunday this was an old oh okay it's just so, you know, it, it's interesting how people's customs are so different. Because for me, most of the funerals I've been to have been Jewish funerals. Mm-hmm. Um, and they literally happen, like, they would have had a funeral on Friday, like the day after Queenie passed away, because that's just our custom. So it feels so weird to, like, have a body be chilling, like, for multiple weeks. How do they keep the body from, you know, like, decaying? In, in balm. Formaldehyde? Yeah. It's so crazy. So crazy. People will be able to go and pay their respects. That's nice. Which is really nice. And then so September 19th is a Monday. Okay, so in a week. Oh, September 19th. Yes, I'll be traveling. Oh, you know what? I might be up super early too. Wait, I'm going to be on Pacific time. So what does that mean? Because I'm going to be traveling. That means 2, 3 a.m. Fuck. Okay, so I'm going to be traveling from Seattle because I have shows in Portland and Seattle this weekend. Come see me, girlwithnojob.com slash tour. We've got a few tickets left to both shows. Again, Portland and Seattle. This is my one and only trip on the tour to the Pacific Northwest, and I would love to see you there. Um, no, no, no. So, not, yeah, I'll not definitely you miss making it. the Queen's funeral about your tour. Like, that I just was feel like the most tacky. brazen way you've ever done it. Usually the conversation flows it did flow naturally. I am going to be in Pacific time because I'm on tour. Tickets available at girlwithnojob.com slash tour. I don't know what you want me to say. I think the queen respects moguls. I think the queen would want you to promote your tour. 100%. She's like literally the definition of a woman who supports other women. Yeah. And a mogul. Well, she and I don't have that in common. Mogul. And mogul. Yeah. She would totally. I don't feel like that was insensitive, honestly. No, no, I don't. no, no, no. I don't think so. And I've been seeing some hella insensitive things about the queen online. So like, oh, my God. Yeah. There's all these people who are just so nasty. Yeah. Like making jokes like someone died. No. uh, Jokes is 
the least of it. Yeah. Um, so I guess I will not be able to catch the funeral. Well, I'm sure there will be replays and highlight reels and we'll get, you know, content. But I do want to watch it live to to be a part of it and to pay my respects. Because right now yeah. I, I feel like I'm in a state of denial. I I was watching Platinum Jubilee yesterday, which was just like, take me back to Platinum Jubilee. You know, I wanted it was, a, to, it was an amazing day. I wanted to be Platinum Jubilee every day. Every day. Like I was rewatching the concert and I was just like loving life. Yeah. Do you think that like this is going to be a type of royal event like with like you know how like every time there's like a royal wedding or something like we get the celebs who go. It's usually like the Beckhams. It's always like Guy Ritchie, Elton John. I feel like Serena Williams, like Oprah um, is like are, do, the, do the presidents go like. Oh, I don't know. I feel like to a degree it'll be like who's there. I, I think it'll more so be like the Elton Johns, not. Feeling Joe Biden, he's not gonna be there. Oh, that I don't. That I don't know if if heads of state and like the Obamas and Trump, like they all met her. Do I don't you know. Go? I don't know. Heads of state, yes, thank heads you. Heads of state, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I think We've never been be alive a, for something like this. For like a big royal funeral. Yeah. I feel like literally every world leader, go like I feel yeah. like well definitely every world leader of countries in the Commonwealth. Yeah probably goes and that's it's why gonna be I like think the Geneva Convention it'll it's be gonna be like more of that less of celebrities. celebrity yeah I think so too especially because a lot of the celebrities they got royal weddings were friends of the kids Megan friends yeah. of, and friends of like William Harry whatever um whereas this is probably like the Queen's associates her associates yeah but it will be like, interesting to see who goes and so will there be speeches from people like in her personal life? Like, will we get to know more like an insight into Queenie's personality? I don't know what she has planned for us. Because I've ended up on the side of TikTok where it's like, you know, times where Queen Elizabeth was caught on camera being funny. Mm -hmm. um, and she was a, an extremely funny person. There's like many moments. She did like little clips for the Invictus Games. She did clips for like Britain in the Olympics. She did a little clip with Bond. Um, Paddington. And she's like an act Paddington. She's like a funny girl. So I would love to get to know more about her, really. Yeah, I think there'll probably be some eulogies. You think we'll Charles? See. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if, they, if this information is even out there yet and I just haven't seen it or... Or like what the protocol is for royal funerals. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar, but also I do believe like she had a plan for all of this. Like she worked on the plan. So it's whatever she wanted, which is so nice to know. Lit. Which is nice yeah. to know. But I do think the for Prince Philip... The concept of planning I, only, your own funeral. The only reference we have is Prince Philip. And I do think there was right. like speeches. It wasn't as star-studded, but it was also no. more COVID-y. Yeah, the concept of like being alive and planning your own funeral is so bizarre. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I'm glad that she did. Like, it's bizarre for lay people, I think. But for the queen, like, we want to do it your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Whatever the queen wants, we respect her wishes. Yeah. So that'll be on Monday, a week from today. And the other royal news that everybody is a flutter about is that the Fab Four were back together in name only, really. But, you know, everyone will take in what name they can only. get. In name only. William, I'm sorry, Prince and Princess of Wales and the former Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Kate, William, Meghan and Harry, were walking through Windsor Castle together looking at the tributes to Gran. And the world is quaking that the four of them were doing something together. Okay, it was like so crazy to see them together. And like part of me was like so upset because like in another world, like they really could have been like this fabulous dynamic foursome. Like if Meghan and Kate had gotten along and like Harry and William's friendship wasn't fractured, like this, it would have been just like an iconic, it was like, it was something we never got. Like this group of the four of them, there could be so many iconic pictures. Like we almost got there. Remember when like Kate and Meghan went to Wimbledon, but like the pictures were sad. Like they both looked miserable. Like. We never got like a fabulous four moment out of them, and we could have because they're brothers. Like, I just it no, made me Claudia, really sad. They're brothers. They're brothers. It made me really sad. That was my first like observation. My second observation was like Megan looked so scared. Like, if there's so much footage of her like actually like looking like she'd rather be anywhere else, and I don't know if that's because she was sad over Gran. She was uncomfortable around Will and Kate. She was just having flashbacks to like 
the terrible times she had while in the royal family. She just looked like completely like she would rather be literally anywhere else. Yeah, people are, there's a lot of body language experts on the case here. I just have to say, like, I don't think anything that we saw, like, was an accident. I don't think anybody, like, slipped. A lot of people are like, William and Kate aren't touching, holding hands, and Meghan and Harry are holding hands. Well, uh, from what I understand, like, members of the royal family can't really do, like, public displays of affection. I don't think, like, William and Kate hold hands, but, like, I don't think that they were caught not holding hands, you know? Yeah, no, that doesn't. Um, also, Meghan is American. No, and, and they're not royal anymore. No, for sure, for sure. But it's also like a cultural thing. Like British people are not very like PDA affectionate and like Americans are. Yeah. So even from that perspective, like that doesn't make me think that Harry and Meghan are more in love and William yeah. and Kate no, are hating each like other. That's like people's takeaway. Also, there was like with the car door, William was like, Kate, get the door. Yes. Okay. <laughs> People are wrong about that because I was watching this live on Sky News, the Apple TV app. And I was like, of course, like Harry's literally like tucking her into the car. And William's like, get in the front seat, bitch. Like it was <laughs> so was different. Like shotgun. <laughs> no, literally. But also like that's like Ben has literally never opened the no, door for me. But like if that's being married for two years versus being married for 10. For sure. But if the eyes of the world were watching... Would he no, open the Ben door? wouldn't think. He wouldn't ben think doesn't. Too. Ben doesn't think like people are gonna know how much I love my wife if I open the door. He's like, I know how much I love my wife, and she can get her fat ass in the car. Like, <laughs> I like. But I thought that was funny because like as a girl whose husband I think like worships me, never has once opened the fucking car door. Uh, literally, he would let the door swing and hit me in the face before he opened it for me. Like he doesn't think of that. Right. And also, there's this weird dynamic where like Kate, I don't think can walk in front of William. <gasps> yes, she, she always, can't. She, walking behind him which like in is dismissive looking in, yeah in modern relationships it's not a thing that you do yeah so like we're coming at it like in the tabloids from our american perspective when she's doing everything right like literally if she meets someone and, and like will is walking over she's not allowed to shake their hand before william does right right so there's just like things that make it look socially awkward, but it totally is protocol. But now that Meghan and Harry don't have to do that, like they can be themselves and be more comfortable and like be more intimate. So people are going to juxtapose that against William and Kate who look like they hate each other. But they're just following protocol. Yeah, and I feel like William and Kate have definitely had like a, a, a bit of a rough patch in the last couple of years in their marriage. I think that there was a lot of rumors um, about, you know, a friend of Kate's coming between them perhaps some infidelity um and seeing them out and about i feel like you know times like this grief and loss like that's what brings families back together that's what heals marriages I and feel i like hope they've been good for a while though i feel like those rumors i think they're were getting back years ago and i feel like they've been pretty strong for a while and i also think they could learn a lot for and they probably have learned a lot from queenie and prince philip yes who, you know maybe went if through they, something similar and maybe if they weren't the queen and the prince they wouldn't have stayed together but for duty they had to and like now we regard their relationship as a you know not a fairy tale i want to say but a model a, an institution. institution and it wasn't without hard work and and pain no. 100 percent, and like they're morphing into that yeah but so, but when you're gonna be compared to like this you know newlywed whirlwind like american romance and also Megan and Harry are very into like touchy feely and just I feel like they just because also maybe because like it's they've cut out a lot of other people in their life like they're very much like us against the world they're insular like yeah, yeah they're, they they're lean team. on they're each other oh, yes because they mostly have each other but I just I do want to say like in terms of a marriage like I definitely identify more with William and Kate because like <laughs> if me and Ben are around other couples like and you're just going to compare us like we're not the ones like groping like we're the ones just like eating and laughing you know yeah yeah uh if I'm wearing heels I'm probably leaning on to my husband that doesn't count that's yeah so if we're in this situation like we're we're linked arms <laughs> just because like, we're out to fall yeah, no, and like, if we're like out to dinner, like, yeah, I'm gonna check my phone, and it doesn't mean I don't love my husband. Yeah, because I'm not holding his hand across the table. Do you know how uncomfortable that is? My arms are short. Like, I also think for William and Kate, like this, they're meeting the the people who love them, who are like there to support them and like show love. And I think for Harry and Meghan, like they didn't know what they were going to receive, considering yes. the way that they've left the UK. And like, you know, it's so interesting how like what we think of the situation because we're totally outsiders like 
our like the American perspective is like Harry and Meghan are like heroic in how they left. And the British perspective is like very anti Meghan and Harry. Like they they took it personal when they mm -hmm. left. So I imagine going back there is not like doing a meet and greet in New York. Like it sucks. Yeah. And you don't know if someone's literally going to like throw a drink in your face. And they're, I don't know if you saw the clip like of a woman who was standing at the barricades. There were two sides of the road filled with barricades. William and Kate went to one side and Meghan and Harry went to the other. So like you knew which royal you were going to meet. And it was clear that this one woman on Harry and Meghan's side, like she wanted to be on William and Kate's side, but they chose the other side. And she literally like did not shake her hand, did not look her in the eyes. And it was truly like so painful and awkward. I actually like I felt really bad for Meghan. That's so awkward. It, it was horrifying. Like, the woman is, like, she has her chin in her hand. She's just, like, looking straight ahead. Like, I am, I totally get, like, not liking a celebrity. Like, okay, let's say I don't like, um, who do I, do I, okay, Charlie, Charlie Puth. Puth. <laughs> um, but he, like, comes up to me at a party and wants to meet, like, of course, like, hey, Charlie, I love your song. Like, I'm fake and I'm a loser. So, honestly, to, like, keep your scrupled hate while meeting the person like that's brave because celebrities are just like intimidating and she is this duchess she's like this worldwide global phenomenon so to really snub her like that was crazy yes i think the circumstances are just a little different though in the sense that like the people who went to the gates of windsor like love the queen immensely like so many people love the queen like we love her but like do you see me at Windsor? No. no, like we don't we don't know her. The, the people who are like standing outside the gates, like leaving those tributes are the Queen's number one fans. And I yeah. think that those people saw the way everything went down and imagine how much that might have hurt the Queen. And, and they're there for the Queen. So, yeah, I think she felt prop this woman probably felt very principled about not saying hi. Overall, like, I got no joy from watching the four of them, like, looking miserable together. No. Because it really highlighted, like, what we got versus what we could have gotten. Like, if the four of them had just worked it out, whatever it was, like, I still don't even really know, like, what the beef between her and Kate was. But if they had been able to, like, become, like, it would have been historic. Like, yeah. they're both, they're all four of them are so fabulous and, like, stylish. And I just imagine what we could have gotten and if it had worked out. And that makes me sad. It does make me sad. And I did not get any joy because I just could feel all the tension. Stiff. All the performative, like, this is theater. And you're, they're right, not like looking at each other. And they're not like, actors, except for one. Right. And they're, like, looking at, they're pointing at little flowers, like, oh, look at that. Like, what? Like, it's literally, Like, how can you acting? actually read anything when you know that everyone is watching and evaluating every move that you're making? Yeah. I will say, before they waved and got into the cars, um, like, you, I don't know if you've seen this clip, like Megan looks like she wants to die. Like literally, she looks like a robot. She looks like she's about to cry, actually. It was really sad. And I'm curious what was going through her mind. Is it, you know, I'm sad for Gran? Is it, I don't want to be here, I hate these people? Like, what is it, you know? I didn't see that. That was after the- You have like, to watch. After the meet and greets. So they look, they look at the flowers. Oh, they point. Look, is that cool? And they walk over the barricades. Then they walk up the barricades to their cars. And then they wave one last time before getting in the car. And she literally is on the verge of tears. Maybe it was that woman who, who snubbed her. Maybe she was getting that maybe. energy from other fans of like. Maybe it was just like a miserable experience. Like yeah. all, all of it, not just one specific moment. Yeah. Oh, I got to say the clip. That's yeah, sad. I'll send it to you. Like, that's the good thing about being on Queen Talk. Like, you don't miss a thing. I know, but you've been sending me some Queen Talks. My new issue with TikTok, they make it so hard for people who don't have the app to enjoy a, a morsel of TikTok. The new thing is, like, the way people put their captions, it's too high for those of us who are viewing on Safari because they, like, have this TikTok brand that drops down so low. Okay, sorry. That makes sense. Like, they're a business, and, you like, if you want to engage, you have to... That's, like... That's literally like watching the toast, but not subscribing. Like, why? Just fucking subscribe. No, but you can still watch the toast, have a premium experience, even if you don't subscribe. Like, we would never. And deny maybe that's people why we're not joy. as big as TikTok. Maybe that's why we're not as big as them. For sure, but I just feel like in my heart, it's the right thing to do to give people that joy for without, a hundred without asking for anything in return. Because we're moguls with a heart. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's the quip date for the day. Anything else that struck you this weekend from our friends across the pond? I don't think so, but I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, while the biggest stars in the UK were doing that, the biggest stars here were at Beyonce's 41st birthday party. Yeah, they were. 
So lots of celebs were seen entering and exiting Beyonce's star-studded birthday bash in Bel Air, California, including Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, Tristan Thompson. Kris Jenner and Corey Gamble as well. I obviously like it's a cool party the Kardashians go, but I think that there's been so many like rumors about what Beyonce thinks about Kim. Um, and f at first it was like Jay-Z, it was literally like the Fab Four. And it, for like a minute it was good, you know? And then it was not. Things obviously got bad between Jay-Z and Kanye. There were a lot of rumors that Beyonce did not like Kim. He thought, she thought that Kim was like tacky. Um, but then recently like, you know, Beyonce sends Ivy Park to Kim. Like, they support one another. You know, Beyonce does that thing where she wishes celebrities happy birthday on her website with, like, a picture of them as a child. And she does it for all the Kardashian girlies. Like, she even does it for Courtney. Like, so it seems like their relationship is, like, fine. I don't know if it was at the level where, you know, she would invite her to her birthday party, but she did, and that makes me really happy because Kim, like, I feel like, I think Kim puts a lot of stock in what, like, people like Beyonce think about her, you know? Because for so long, she was like that reality star, sex tape girl, and she's like worked so hard to get out of that. So to be invited to Beyonce's birthday party is like, it's a validating thing, I think. Yeah, definitely. It's not like so surprising to me. I feel like where doesn't Kim get invited except Buckingham Palace for the right. Platinum Jubilee. For the Jubilee. Uh, and now, I don't know if that was true, but I'm sure she even wishes more so now that she were that there. That she was able to score an invite, yeah. I thought it was nice that Chloe was there. A lot of people were like, Tristan. I think Tristan was literally someone's plus one. Like, I don't think he got invited by Beyonce. I think he was Drake's plus one. I think him and Drake yeah. are friends. Like, he wasn't, you know, he didn't get, you know, Mr. Tristan Thompson address. And he you was, don't and, think, and you don't and think he was Chloe's plus one? No. You don't think they're I don't. together? No, they didn't arrive together, no. Also, Machine Gun and Megan Fox were there looking really... That was surprising. Really great. Yeah, surprising too. Which one do you think was on the invitation? Which one was the plus? Megan. You think? Yeah. What's the relationship? There's not a relationship, but Megan's just been around in Hollywood and like been A-list for so long. Like Those are the types of relationships you make. And I think her and Beyonce are probably around the same age. 41 would be the age. Yeah, that, that tracks for both of them. Okay, right? yeah. Lizzo was also there. Lily Rose Depp, Vanessa Bryant, Jay Z. Of Random. Course. Oh no, uh, sorry. I thought you said Vanessa Bayer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. So um, Rich Paul and Adele. Yes, I think the it looked theme fabulous. Is like roller disco. Roller disco. Yeah. It did look fabulous. Everyone was showing up and showing out, and I'm glad they had a good like, time. That's a party. Like I dead ass have FOMO from. Like, let me go, please. But at least you had a fun weekend in your own right. For sure, but not as fun as theirs. Really? Not that but it's it, a competition. No, no, but like it could have easily been like one of those parties that has all the makings of a great party. For sure. But just the energy sure. is off. I don't know. I just feel like people like put their energy on high alert for when, Beyonce's party. I, I, I agree with that. I don't think the and energy I, was off. I'm just saying like there's a chance it could have been. Did you see a photo of Beyonce? Because I didn't. No, well, I think it was at her house. So she never had to leave and she never had to come in. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. I'm just really happy Kim was there. Like, that wouldn't have been a given. Oh, also, speaking of the Kardashians, we finally got... Yep, that's our next story. Oh, okay. Business news from Courtney. We know what Lemmy is. So this morning, Courtney dropped all the details about Lemmy. I'm going to read it from her Instagram caption because there's a lot of information. And but the information basically says Claudia, Claudia was, right. was right. That's the yeah. headline here. Claudia was right. She said, let me finally share what I've been up to. I've been dreaming of this idea, having lots and lots and lots of meetings and conversations with different people, trying to figure out the best way to build this, the right partners and building the team that felt really good. When it was finally all right, it was all happening with ease. Lots of hours, Zooms, dreaming, but all with swift decisiveness and actual fun. At last, five years later, my passion work baby is finally launching into the world. Meet Lemmy, my new line of vitamins and supplements that I created to become a divine feel-good part of your everyday life. We partner with the best scientists and doctors to create the cleanest gummy vitamins and supplements using clinically backed ingredients and formulations that help you live your best life. So I was right, things in which to live. And of course, we made them so delicious you won't believe they're good for you. We launch on September 27th, 2022, exclusively on LemmyLive.com. So, um, one, I was right. Yeah. Two, uh, this is not surprising. This is super on brand for Courtney. I think it's more on brand than being a Boohoo sustainability ambassador. Like, this is this feels right. 
that's why like it's a good thing like I was able to guess it do you know what I mean like because that means it makes sense for her right um I will say though that this is like a really saturated space um with brands like that are like influencer backed that like you know there's Ollie there's Ritual Goop has um so I just find I think um, it's gonna be hard Right. There's oh, the, what Tati, um, Vital Proteins, Tati, Sugar Bear. Like there are a lot of gummy um, companies that are all like clean, non-GMO. Like they all kind of do. Right. Big competitor. So I do think it's going to be hard to enter the space kind of late and make a real impact. But that's what the Kardashian brands do. So that remains to be seen. I think the branding is really cool. Um, but I, I do think what you said last week is really on point like why wouldn't this be a poosh brand yeah I was just thinking that like because this could be poosh DTC Supplements. like you know poosh finally has like a product and not a conceptual website I feel like no shade to poosh but I I feel like one it's not that like massive or anything not like a brand that you have to capitalize on and two I don't know that the name like outside of their circle and I know that like Courtney is poosh and they call P poosh like I feel like the name never really hit but like the way I think about Lemmy already I'm like that's a fucking brilliant name the concept the 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 names of the vitamins let me just re let me just read some of them um where is it yeah I agree and making it like it's Here, own like, separate brand they had like a whole separate launch for it yeah. a new Instagram it's more exciting they have de-stress gummies called Lemmy Chill they have um, concentration gummies called Lemmy Focus and then energy B12 gummies called Lemmy Matcha so like I feel like there's so many more opportunities for branding and whatnot whereas I don't think the Poosh brand ever went past like that initial wellness community Blog. yeah that like very niche audience yeah, no, I think that's totally fair. And I agree that like it's more of a, a moment because it's its own brand with like really great graphics and logos. But I do think like she has a challenge in terms of differentiating yourself because all these gum, like personally, I use Ollie vitamins. I take the hair and nails and I also do the uh, melatonin ones. Um, and they have cute names. Like it's, it's just like a, it's a saturated space. I agree, but I will say, um, and I don't, I don't, currently take any gummies but when it comes to like wellness and what you put in your body and all of that like I actually would trust Courtney like she's Same. about that life you uh -huh. know and she's and, been walking the walk like before it was cool yeah and I believe her when she says it's been five years and like looking for the right partners and like I I would trust her on this because she's That's so, so true she's so about it and like militant about it she's been that way on the show for so many years and I I think it would like go against everything she believes in to put in something put out something that like doesn't check all those boxes for her that's super true I am curious though if like when she left that um comment on Instagram saying she was on the phone with her attorneys working on seven business deals if this was one of them it could have been like okay this the boohoo sustainability you know at the time a few years ago she did like a pretty little thing collab then there was poosh then like poosh x goop poosh your wellness virtual yeah. retreat and mm -hmm. number seven um they had a day camp remember push day camp oh Summer that camp? was that was really cute it was like an influencer thing but it was cute mm -hmm. yeah yeah seven business okay. deals you love to see it mm -hmm. so let me live i love it i think it's genius um and agreed it's great that like you were able to guess it if she ever wants to come out with non-toxic cookware like i'm open because i love my caraway so much that like I would get more far away. Maybe they'll branch out. Like, yeah, I think you know, assuming this is good, and it looks like the logo, that swirl. She in the promo picture, she's like laying in a, like a ball pit of swirls, and I guess that's what the gummies are going to be like. Oh, swirls. cute! That's really cute. Yeah, they look like Smarties. Yeah, I think it's all really cute. great. I'm really happy for her. It's the season, yeah. of Courtney. No, and like she really needs to post that clip in the back of the car where she's fighting with Kim about the Candyland themed birthday. Like, how can you have a Candyland with no fucking candy? You're wearing leather shoes, plastic glasses. We need that. Yeah. Also, subset B of Kardashian Business Ventures, Kylie is launching a new series on her YouTube channel called Kylie's Glam Bar, where she'll be like interviewing people at like a glam pink bar oh, in her it's studio. Giving it's giving Haley Bieber welcome to my bathroom. It, that's exactly what it is. But it's also good because she has this huge YouTube channel. She puts out one video every six months. Um, yeah. Now we'll have some like regularity with the content. 
And we'll get to see more of Kylie's personality, which I love. She's been like so low key. Like she has to come back. Like I know she had a baby and I respect no, mamas. She, but, but let's she's go. Back. She's been back for like since London. She's doing everything. She's doing the press, this and that. Kendall was on a podcast today, by the way. Did you see this? Yes, Jay Shetty, Jackie. He's the I one know, who married, married Ben and Jen. Lo. Very cool. So I feel like Kylie is in mogul mode and I love this idea for her YouTube channel. I love it too. I love the Kardashians embracing podcasting. I feel like um, a lot of Chloe's anxieties that she talked about, like about interviews and stuff, really I think exist when it comes to traditional media because it's just like so old school and like it's not, those aren't even her fans watching. It's like people, like old people. I feel like them embracing podcasting is first of all so good for them because they really get an opportunity to like speak for a long period of time and like really say how they feel and like not be like a dumb clip on Jimmy Fallon. Mm -hmm. um, and people are very receptive. Like, I feel like a lot of people, once they watch, like, a long-form interview of anyone, but, like, specifically a Kardashian, they always leave with, like, more respect for them, you know? Yeah. Even if they didn't start out liking them. So I feel like the platform, like, the medium is really good for them, and I love to see them doing more podcasts. Like, it's everything. It's a great medium. I mean, we can't say enough good things about it. I think it's really a wonderful space, and I've enjoyed my time in the space. And, of course, like, if Kylie, too, wants to venture into podcasting, like... There's no place safer for you than here at the Morning Toast. We will literally, you know, like eat your due date, anything you want. <laughs> Are you ready for our next story? Yeah. Leah Michelle is devastated to skip Funny Girl due to COVID-19 symptoms and confirmed COVID at this point. Okay, like not me literally putting this in the universe. Did you say this? What'd you say? Remember I told you that the toasters played a prank on me when I was on Instagram Live, like getting ready for Funny Girl. Mm. Then they write, oh my God, Claudia Lee has COVID. And now she does. Oh. This sucks. Like not to be rude, sucks. but like who gets COVID? Like <laughs> where the fuck have you been hanging out? Like the whole, I like so much of the cast has it apparently. Like there's a no, lot there's of There's like a out. crazy outbreak. Yeah. I swear to God, like, I don't know anyone, like, personally who has gotten COVID in the last, like, year. Like, no, like, people are still getting COVID. It's still going around, but it's just, I think, the way that we, like, think about it and deal with it now is just, like, okay. It's, like, different. Yeah, it's not like you have to, like, shut down, like, you know. Right, put move to a remote <laughs> island. In your house, like, go into a quarantine camp. It's like, yeah. okay, get well soon. We'll see you soon. Yeah, see you soon, girlie. I'll send you some soup. Text me when you're um, feeling better. <laughs> By the way, this sucks, but, like, it also kind of rocks for Leah Michelle. Like, you know, easing back into Broadway is not easy. Like, she did a Monday show, a two, no, she did a Tuesday show, two Wednesday shows, and, like, it's very physically exhausting. So to get, like, a week off and, like, be with your kid, like, kind of rocks. I don't know, but she had, like, all this momentum. Don't you feel like, I would I would agree with that, like, in a few months. Like, yay, I get, you know, a week off, but yeah, she a lot of momentum. so much momentum, and it's, like, the plot of this storyline like keeps getting thicker like it just it's the craziest saga how like art was imitating life and then life was imitating art and now it just like keeps going and people what sucks is like the you know people rosie o'donnell literally tweeted no i'm flying in next week like people are flying in of like yeah that's who it really sucks for like the ticket holders the people. who are there to see leah apparently her understanding and is amazing so julie banco was the understudy for beanie and beanie like half the time didn't show up and people fucking love Julie Banco. She's like a really authentic to the role. She's Jewish. She speaks Yiddish. Like she's amazing. And when Beanie dipped out early before Leah was set to start, Julie was not the understudy. She was the main girly for like an entire month and people loved her. Ben's parents saw her, said she was amazing. I'm sure she's great. But if you're buying the tickets, you're doing it because of all the fanfare from Leah. Yeah. So that's, that's just a, like, a risk you take with Broadway. Yes. You know? I do. I did it's read risky somewhere. It's business. I follow this girl on TikTok. Like, if you know, you know. They're like, she tells you like crazy facts like about like business and like like customer service. And she like does these little skits. So she like she'll be like pretending to talk to the cashier. Well, I know that you know Nike has to give me my shoes back, my money back if my shoes don't blah blah blah. And the cashier is like, fine. How did you know that? And she goes, because I follow Erica. She reads the tips, the terms and agrees. <laughs> <laughs> the terms and conditions so you don't have to that's why I follow her she's this girl Erica and you know what I've learned so much from her like little things like about how companies like have to give you your money back like and on Broadway I think I learned this from Erica like if you get tickets in the understudy like you can get your money back just saying oh don't do um, it I know like, it's, like, I understand sad. 
But this girl, Erica, so ev like Shapiro loves her. He's like, do you know Erica? And he like repeated her signature, like sign off in her videos. He's like, that's why I follow Erica. She reads the terms and conditions. She's a lawyer and he loves her. And I was in a taxi and I saw a taxi TV commercial. She bought like ad space for her TikTok. I thought that was so smart. I'm going to do that. That is really smart. No, we should do it for the toast. No offense. We've actually always said like, we don't do any marketing. But like it couldn't hurt to like, you know, uh, spend a little money on some like marketing. Some billboards and in your taxi town. Taxi TV. I think we could just play like a little sizzle reel of us being cute and funny. Yeah. I think we need billboards. Yeah. I've Every time we talk about this, like I get reached out to by like a million toasters who work in like out of, what's it called? Out of home? Out, uh, clear channel? Outdoor yeah. voice? <laughs> yeah, one of those. Um, and like I've, uh, like five times I've taken it all the way. We make like mock ups. And then I get the price and I'm like, no one cares about us. Why are we spending like, so much money on like subway ads and billboards in Times Square like it does nothing no I think like it does stuff but you have to have so many and like we could really just probably get the one yeah no like my dream like I, we need to wrap for an entire summer like a Hampton Jitney yeah just like with our big faces and like everyone will take pictures of it and when they're in the city and the Hamptons like because like our biggest city in terms of like audience is New York, like the tri-state right, area. Does that not mean that we should go to a different city and build up our audience there? Like maybe we've hit a lot of people here. And would it just be people seeing it who already listen? Yeah, but like then they'll take pictures of it. Like, so maybe we'll dive into some marketing, but probably not. It's just something we talk about. And now I'm going to get like a million emails um, and I'll probably like pretend to do it and then not. Yeah, we prefer our grassroots marketing efforts. Uh, tell a friend about the morning toast. Phone Just a friend. friend. Phone a friend. Phone a friend who you know doesn't listen. Tell them. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. That's the one. Now are you ready for our fifth and final story? I really am. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, I Is was going to say. Like, I totally forgot like to work today. Is it the <laughs> fifth and final story that's brought to you by Osea? Yes. It's important to prep your skin to stay hydrated and smooth with safe, clean products. And that's why Osea skincare products help nourish, soften, and smooth your skin to keep you glowing from head to toe. Osea is a brand I saw like so many fabulous people using on social media for so long. And I finally like got with the program and I can say like it lives up to the hype. What I really like about them is all their products are big. It's like, it's not a uh, cream you use three times and then it goes away. Like, no, this will last mm -hmm. you for a long time. So if you want to maintain your radiant summer skin during the fall, like if you have a tan that you want to keep hydrated, um, check out the Osea's Andaria Algae Body Oil. It keeps your skin soft and glowing with Andaria Algae, Acai Pulp, and Babasu Seed Oil. It's rich and not greasy. I've been very hesitant to use body oils because like who wants to walk around like all slicked up, but it's not greasy at all. And like it really, there's a, a really effective nourishing feeling from it. It smells so good. The container is huge. Like it will last you a long time and it just feels good to like know that it's made with like real things from the sea it's clean it's nourishing they also have um this total body glow trio that comes with the Andaria algae body oil but it also includes a moisturizing body scrub and a plant-based body brush if you like to tan um artificially like you need to be doing like a real routine before you're putting on tanner and that means scrubbing exfoliating hydrating and this um trio is perfect for that you get rid of the dead skin then hydrate for soft glowing skin and all their products are clean safe responsibly sourced vegan cruelty free and powered by the sea so find your new skincare and body care favorites at oseamalibu.com and get a special discount just from listening to the toast that's 10 percent off your first order for site wide from the entire site with promo code toast at oseamalibu.com you also get free samples with every order over and orders over 50 dollars get free shipping so you're going to want it all at O-S-E-A Malibu.com promo code TOAST great our fifth and final story a little exciting daytime news as mm -hmm. you know fall TV is getting underway Jennifer Hudson and Sherry Shepard are part of the daytime TV makeover uh New shows debuting this week include The Jennifer Hudson Show. Okay, wait for them to Jennifer bury Hudson, the lead. Right? And then Sherry Shepard is getting her own show called Sherry, which doesn't sound like new news because she was Wendy. filling in for Wendy, and now I think it's just Sherry. And also, Karamo Brown of Queer Eye is getting his own show called Karamo. Okay. They're joining a daytime lineup that includes continuing talk variety series is The Kelly Clarkson Show, The Drew Barrymore Show, Tamron Hall, and ratings leaders like The View, Dr. Phil, and Live with Kelly and Ryan. So um, 
like wait for them to not like promote this at all like who the fuck knew I feel like when Kelly was getting her show and then there was talks about like who's going to take Ellen's time slot Jennifer Hudson's name was floated around a little bit but we never even got confirmation that she was getting her own show so like wait for them to fumble that completely no and so I saw that uh, Jennifer Hudson and Sherry Shepard had daytime talk shows premiering. So I Googled like Jennifer Hudson, Sherry Shepard shows and every single article is the exact same headline. It was just like a PR Wire. blitz, but there's no Details. press really around it or like different articles. Like we're talking to Jennifer Hudson. It's just yeah. like everything says Jennifer Hudson and Sherry Shepard are part of a daytime shakeup. And so it's like copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. I do feel like Sherry Shepard and Jennifer Hudson are good choices. I feel like Karamo is very much like the future. You know, he's on a streaming service. He's very much an influencer. Um, and as much as, you know, be, having your own talk show is so cool, it's not like the thing anymore. You know, you can have a YouTube channel that gets 10 times more viewers than a daytime show and it's prestigious and it's cool and it's old school, but it's not really like the media platform of the future. And Karamo is very much like a pioneer. I agree with that. But I think like when done right, it's big it's big business like Ellen even Kelly like is someone who's a new host but like having so much success and like will have success for years to come I think it's so hard to get right and be successful in the space and I think that's why probably it's not for most people and you can have an easier time being successful doing something on your own but like when it hits there's really not many things that are bigger than that right so odds are of these three new shows like maybe one of them will hit um and who would you predict has the best chance I think I would say Sherry just because she's so she's so experienced like she was on The View she filled in for Wendy like she's a real talk show host and people think being a talk show host is so easy like just sit and talk about yourself it's actually not like it's a per you have to sometimes I watch clips from Kelly and I love her but I do feel like she talks over a lot of her guests sometimes like it's a perfect balance of talking and listening while also being interesting but also not too interesting because it's not about you really yeah, so you're just the host yeah so Sherry I feel like is interesting and famous enough but not to the point like where it's overbearing and I feel like Jennifer Hudson is like this worldwide talent she's like an Oscar winner I, I think it might be hard not to make it about her yeah, but you would be surprised. It's crazy who is successful and who isn't. And I feel like over the years, we'll meet a celebrity and we're like, oh my God, they're so funny. They're so great. They should have a talk show. Bethany, Kris Jenner, mm -hmm. Tyra. Even though Tyra's show went was for a, a really success. long time. It was a success. It was a success, but like, it's not Ellen. Right, right. So I, I can name a lot of things that contribute to being a successful daytime talk show host, but there is that one thing that separates the Ellens of the world from from the felons. Hundred percent. Okay, so, but so if you had to put your money on one of these three, I don't know. I I feel like it could be Jennifer Hudson. Mm, no, I would say Sherry Karamo then Jennifer Hudson. I would do. Jennifer Hudson, Sherry, Karamo. Yeah. Because what he w does on Queer Eye, he's kind of like the... He's technically like the he's culture like, He's expert. like the insides coach. Like everybody's working on the outside and he's working on the inside. He's like the therapist, yeah. And he's like the confidence coach mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah. Um, Not my favorite scenes. <laughs> no, not my favorite segments. No, that's <laughs> so true. Like... Because for when you're watching a makeover show, like you want to see the makeover and you can't see someone's insides being made over. No, but like it's, you could have interesting conversations with people like, how'd you get to this place? Like, what are you about? What, you know? And it's just like, never really did it for me. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Can we please talk about House of the Dragon? Like I think of nothing yeah. else. No, that was the story. Anyway, some d sh daytime shakeups. Let us know who you'll be listening to. Sound off in the comments. Make your predictions. Who's going, who's going all the way? Okay. House of the Dragon episode whatever last night like I like I needed that like I was obsessed and I know I've been like joking about like how obsessed I am with this like level of incest but yesterday it just like truly came to a head for me like just seeing them kiss so when she went into her room the episode had like a spooky element because I was like oh my god someone's in her room me and Ben were like who's gonna kill Rhaenyra like they had like and I didn't know what we were looking at and I thought maybe like somebody left a bag in there like full of like a trick I don't know but the fact that she got to escape and like head out with him was like amazing except the episode had such a fatal flaw that I couldn't get past it what's that the beanie they didn't have beanies in the 1500s it wasn't a beanie it was like it was a, a beanie. Boy cap. it was from Urban Outfitters it was a full-blown beanie 
oh, I didn't find that to be an issue. My issue with it was like, it was like a night out in King's Landing, but everything that we've seen about King's Landing is like horrific. The people are evil, awful, yeah. like murderous, thievery. And it was like a lit night on the town. It's like fashion week in King's Landing. <laughs> and it's like, where's the King's Landing that we know and yeah. that we don't love? No, and honestly, I feel like in the original show, there was a couple scenes where they went to like local plays and like saw how the people perceive them. And it's so sad and so mean. Like, why would you go? That's like going on Reddit and reading about no, yourself. For sure, but Damon needed to show her why it's important. What, he, it was a night of education. One, why it's important to make a strong match maritally because your claim is at risk. The people don't take you seriously. They don't take you seriously yet and a strong marriage will help them take you seriously, which you need to consider. Two, education point two, marriage isn't all bad. Right, like we can fuck and have a good time. No, like sex isn't just about making babies right like a lot of your friends probably told you that because you know your bestie has to have sex with your dad and it literally looks like the most miserable fucking experience and that side by side of Damon and Rhaenyra getting it on which literally like made my whole life I was obsessed spliced up with uh her friend having to have sex with the king like that was so sad um and like you you know I had been like harboring some hatred for the friend um and in that moment like it, what my hatred was unjustified because like she didn't even want this she had no choice and look at her life like it sucks yeah I think the friend is fine maybe she'll turn maybe all this misery will turn her to be like an evil queen but right now she really is always looking out for Rhaenyra like what choice does she have her but she dad was being just like a little her. condescending when she heard that like she was fucking she was acting more like her mother stepmother than her friend Okay, well, that's the role she's also in. I think sometimes she's a friend, like when Rhaenyra was being like lonely, moping around the picnic. Yeah. And sometimes she's her stepmother who needs to tell her that like incest is not best. Okay, wait, let's Especially talk about that. Especially given that Allison doesn't come from a history of incest, I think. Right, it's unfamiliar to her. Let's talk about Damon. Um, he showed up with short hair and it really did not bother me. I thought he was going to be very Samson and I would like start hating him because like his hair was really his strength. But he looked so unbelievably hot. Like, the way I didn't even look at him twice when he played Prince Philip in The Crown and now I would literally stand in front of a bus for him like it's not normal it's not normal um but I think that says more about Prince Philip than it does about Matt Smith and also it, Prince Philip was in his fuckboy era right so you like hated him the future Prince Philip actor you probably love yeah he's sweet P. John him with the, the one who like wants to meet the astronauts yeah. and like takes his plane to the moon <laughs> right like acts nuts okay but let's talk about the whorehouse. I didn't, you know, really love that he made them, you know, show their yellow hair and like be a spectacle. That seemed like he wasn't, he obviously has a plan. And his plan was that like, oh, she'll be a whore and no one will want to marry her. And there, then I'll be the one to come save the day. You think so? Kind of. Like, because it is the perfect plan. Like if everyone finds out that she's not wed, she, I mean, that she's not a virgin, no one's going to want to marry her no matter how much, you know, status or money she has. And... He just kind of made himself like one of the only options. I guess. I feel like for me, he took off their garb so that like they could be attracted to each other. Like when she was dressed as like a little boy, I don't think he was going to like start (laughs) making out with her. Okay, that's also fair. But it did feel like because they didn't fuck because like he actually loves her and maybe like their first time should be a little bit more special than on the floor of a basement of a brothel. Um, But he did want to like set this plan in motion. Interesting. You have been right about Damon all along, so I'm going to go with you. For me, Damon and Rhaenyra are endgame because it's like they strengthen each of their claims to the throne. Little toddler can scram. And they clearly, I like them both as main characters, so I like them together. But trying to get them mentally from uncle and niece I know, it's- to... OTP I'm struggling and when they started making out like I was not okay I was freaking out I was like happy for them but also like Wait, this is weird how old is Rhaenyra now me and Ben couldn't 17. figure it out yikes okay 17 and, and a bunch of months going on 18 you are 16 going, going on, on 17. 17 okay yes I agree like in terms of incest like I didn't really flinch at Jon Snow and 
Because they weren't raised as auntie and nephew. They were total strangers. They got together first romantically and then found this connection out. And so what and are you to do then? Jamie and Cersei, like, were actually twin brother and sisters. Like, that's next level. But uncle and auntie is right there. And if I wasn't so obsessed with because, Damon. Because, like, she, he's always been her uncle Damon. Yeah, like, so how do you look at your uncle? How do you look like your uncle? Yeah, um... It doesn't, honestly, like maybe I'm sick in the head. It does not bother me. I'm enthralled. But the next big thing is like homegirl goes home. Her uncle got her all horny with no climax. So she takes to the next best thing, Sir Kristen Cole, who is so handsome and so sweet and like really was clearly struggling like with the decision between his honor and his dick. Um, and I'm glad he went with his dick because it was totally the right choice. I thought that was a beautiful lovemaking scene. What a way to lose your virginity. You know, nobody gets it like that. Good for you, Rhaenyra. But I really did not feel like they needed us to watch her take off all of his armor. It was so painful. It was so <laughs> slow. I'm like, you couldn't have stumbled upon like someone with a job who doesn't require them to wear 45 layers. Like, I don't know why we had to watch that. I don't know why, like literally she was taking off both of his cuffs and she took two hours. Like it was no, so here's frustrating. The thing. They actually sped it up. Like. If he's wearing that much armor, it's very difficult to take off. Otherwise, you'd like go into a war and like be off within in of five course. seconds. So they sped up the armor, but it was still a lot they, of footage. They tried to make it as romantic as possible. What and you I know say? what? It was really sweet, but obviously, like it changed so much because while she's not lying to everyone about not having sex with Damon, she's lying by omission because she is no longer a virgin. No, she lied straight up to Allison because she said, "I'm still a maiden, girl." Oh, true. But and she swore on her mother. Justice to the mom. Her mom would have wanted it. And with this, you know, uh, plan B pill of tea. The maester's plan B. She obviously needs it, but it's also a test because if she drinks it, she's pretty much validating to everyone that she fucked and she's never going to tell everyone she fucked Sir Christian Cole. Oh, I don't think she'll be tested to see if she drank it. I do. I don't think so. I think that um, she could uh, say she decided not to drink it. She wouldn't just leave it there. She could just throw it in the fire or whatever. I don't think that's going to be a test, but I do think she'll drink it. Because, she better. No, but her whole thing was like, I don't want to just squeeze out kids. And it's like, right. has sex once and now unprotected, wants to squeeze out kids. no pull out. Come on, girl. Yeah, I think she'll drink it. I think, uh, she, like, she, I don't think she wants kids. That was literally the whole point of the exercise. What's so sad is that, like, if I wasn't so head over heels obsessed with Daenerys as a couple, I love Sir Kristen Cole. I think he's such a nice boy. He is, like, kind of common, but, like, also has a little noble blood. He's a nice, good guy. New episode of The Good Guys is out today. Um, so, I like, in another life, I would be thrilled. He's not a powerful enough match for her. He's too common. He does nothing it, for her. If there, he does nothing for her. Like, if she's going to secure a Dornish alliance, like, she's going to go with the king of Dorn. No, of course. But, like, she's very much interested in making a match that makes her happy. Right. But but within the confines Social, of yeah. royal but people, he's a nice boy. You can't boy. just, like, go find Joe Schmo. No, he's just a nice boy, and he, he likes is. her. He is. And when he finds out that he was plan B... Oh my God, he's gonna be heartbroken. He's gonna be devastated. Like he's in, I don't know where, like what happens next. Like I just know like if Daenerys does not happen, I won't be okay. Well, I think they're happening. I think the wheels are in motion. They're turning, yeah, this is the, the plan is obviously to get them together. Yeah. Cause it next makes sense week, for everyone. Did you watch preview for next week? No, I don't like to. Oh, I do. It, it, they don't give you like that much. It's only interesting when, like, I saw there was a baby. But um, it's just like Otto. I think he's like there being was banished a baby. From, uh, Eamon. Oh, oh, oh. Remember oh. when I said there was a toddler in the Got baby it. Okay, for okay. next week? Um, Otto is like leaving. I think he's being banished from the castle, and he's like yelling at his daughter to make Eamon king. <laughs> okay, I like did feel bad for him because while he wasn't lying, but he is like a self serving little fuck, and I don't really like him. And he is like serving his own self-interest but he's also a good hand to the king but like you can't really be that great if you're obsessed with your family no it, it was time for him to go but it's like you he might have killed your dad and 
now it's time yeah no it's like of all the things like the one time he actually is telling the truth like you didn't find it a little weird when he shoved his teenage daughter in your bed the second your wife died like there were so many right. other things that like actually made him a bad hand of the king and this one he actually handled with great discrep Discres discretion discretion he was pretty respectful um so like why now why this rumor because Rhaenyra put her foot down and and look at Rhaenyra getting everything she wants in in just the blink of an eye of one episode I love to see her just really taking what's hers you know Damon yeah I saw something not a spoiler or anything but I think there's about to be no soon, don't like a, no, no just a, a don't. I, we've talked about this just that they time is moving very quickly oh okay that doesn't bother me yes but, you know uh someone told me my friend abe I, and it, you know the character who plays rhaenyra like when she grows up we get a different character it's like that's the crown. what i was gonna say that's what i was gonna say oh she, i think what from what i, I hate that by the way i know but like do we get a new daemon i don't think so i oh by the way if we get a new daemon i'm leaving i'm but done she with the just show. looks so young she, Rhaenyra, she, which is she's at the also, age it, where you actually look different as you grow up like once you're 40 you look the same right but I think Rhaenyra Millie Alcock is the actress. Yeah. I think she's like 23. So she, we must be going like 10 years ahead if she really has got to go. I really like the actress, so I'm not thrilled. 22. That sucks. Hold on. What are you looking up? I just saw like a related woman in the search for Millie Alcock and I'm just wondering if she's the next Rhaenyra. Yeah, I, she could be anyone. But I don't want to know. Th that's my Rhaenyra. Sorry, like. Nothing but respect for my Rhaenyra, but you would have thought that about like the crown. Claire Foy is my queen. Right, right. Olivia Coleman is also queen. my queen and Imelda Staunton is also my queen. 100%. So um, we can be changed. We can be changed. But the show is just so good. This episode was so good. And I'm just so grateful for the incest, really. But what I was going to say is, I think next episode is our last episode with Millie. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to say last episode of the season. I'm like, seriously, fuck these people. Like, <laughs> fuck these people. They don't want us to have any joy. Yeah. No, Game of Thrones doesn't pull that. Actually, they do. They're like, Remember they took eight, two years off? They took two years off and came back with eight episodes. Yeah, like towards the end, they were giving it like low effort. They were giving us nothing. <laughs> nothing. Um, oh, also, so in the beginning of the episode, when she's coming back on the ship and then she realizes she's near Dragonstone, she stopped off and saw Damon, yeah? Wait, sorry, what? In the beginning of the episode, they're on a ship. Coming back from the tourney or whatever. From the tour. Yeah. From the husband tour. And a dragon swoops in, so she looks up and she realizes there's Dragonstone, which is where Damon lives. But wasn't Damon was just returning from the war? No, then I think she stopped over to see him. Who knows what happened? Then she goes home. He comes in with his crown, and she so she said, "You look so comfortable at Dragonstone." It was like a sl was I a missed very that whole thing. Small thing. Mm -hmm. I missed it completely. I don't know if I what I saw was right. I question everything now. I feel like I'm like really missing. The point, oh, by the way, how'd you feel seeing the whore again? What's she up to? Oh my God. When he woke up in that brothel and this fucking whore was back, I was like, this fucking bitch, get out of here. I wasn't sure if she was like keeping, actually keeping him a prisoner. Like he looked like he was drugged. Right. Also, I don't understand how like he can go do a one man battle with all of the crab feeders army, you know, literally gut him and drag him through the beach, but like can't handle a hangover and is laying on the floor of the throne room. Maybe he's has a broken heart maybe he gets migraines like me hundred he's pr prone to migraines for sure <laughs> it's like yeah it's possible no i my eyes rolled like 360 degrees when i saw that bitch i'm like get the fuck out of here but it sounds like she's gotten out of the flesh business and yeah, also but it looked like she was in the human trafficking business like why were those kids handing her money and i think that kid was the spy the snitch yes so she's working for Otto. so he's being betrayed also, what are we going to do about his first wife? She's got to go. I'm not worried about her. They'll, you know, chop her head off or something. She's got to go. The bronze <laughs> bitch. Like, I'm not worried about her in the slightest. Okay, because Rainier is nobody's, like, second when wife. When he said second wife, I'm like, how dare you? Seriously, how yes. dare you? One of many? No, no. Disgusting. Yeah. Um, let's do a little bit more TV recap. I just want to give my thoughts on Beverly Hills and yours on Southern Charm. 
and it's brought to you by Bruch. Bruch is an electric toothbrush that will change the way you think about brushing your teeth. With powerful sonic technology and ultra gentle bristles, the Bruch redefines what it means to have super clean teeth. It's like that feeling when you just leave the dentist, a fresh whole mouth clean every single day. So the electric toothbrush, when you get the, like, the Bruch kit, which is what I have, you get to choose your color. They have like stunning colors. It's giving fashion week. You get three different brush heads, the toothbrush itself, a magnetic charging station, and a sleek travel case. So the great thing about the Bruch is that once you fully charge it, it literally can last, last so long that you can travel without the charger if you're traveling for like a weekend or even a week. Um, but it's also like very no must, no fuss. It's not like this big bulky thing. You can maintain like your clean, clutter-free energy with the Bruch. I have it in pink and like magenta and like millennial pink. Ben has it in like a hunter green. It's everything. My teeth have never been more stunning. Take a look. <sighs> at my pearly whites and you can get 20% off when you pick your Bruch brush kit and plan at bruch.com slash toast that's 20% off when you go to b-r-u-u-s-h dot com slash toast bruch.com slash toast so the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills like kind of hit like a low point but this most recent week was really powerful because they went to Aspen and apparently like Aspen is where everything goes down and while I think the thing we're waiting for to happen doesn't go down it was still a really interesting episode um one you know they're going back and forth about the same shit but after one night um erica gets like black out and they're just talking about the victims and the conversation starts with like garcelle crystal and maybe diana asking erica questions and she's like not her typical kind of political answers she's just going in she's like these victims are not my problem I don't care about them uh you guys only care about them because of what the public thinks and all the other women are on the couch but they slowly start like hearing what she's saying and you know Sutton who has been Erica's biggest you know investigator slash critique she is just sitting and listening and absorbing because honestly I don't think anyone can believe the shit that's coming out of Erica's mouth and her friends are like trying to protect her which just like kind of annoys me because like they don't protect everyone. You know, if anyone else outside of like that core group, Dorit, Rinna, Kyle, Erica, if anyone else was like wasted and saying crazy things about like a scandal they were going through, like no one would protect them and try and get them out of there. Kyle was basically like, stop saying any, all of this. I won't be able to defend you. Like, let's get her out of here. And it's like, no, let her, let her just like you would let everyone else. Like nobody runs yeah. and jumps and helps Sutton. Yeah. And everyone is just so fucking mean to Sutton and she's so bad at defending herself. And like Garcelle is helpful, but like, the way like Diana and Erica are two of the most evil women I've ever like basically everyone is getting mad at Sutton for for something and Sutton was like well where was all this energy when literally uh, Erica called me a cunt like you guys weren't all baffled like you know holds clutching your pearls and Diana was like and it was quiet and Diana was like well that's because you are a cunt it was so mean. And then her and Erica are hysterically laughing. Sutton's sitting there crying. Like it was, and then Diana starts to cry. Like it was so evil and manipulative. And I hate these, this group of women, like literally I can't watch it. Cause I'm like actually a good person, you know? And I have a moral compass and I have feelings and I, I can't watch like this gang up of women. Like it's horrible, but the real turning point, And I think like, I think a, a lot of like the big moment that happens in Aspen has to do with Kathy and like, I don't know what goes down, but I see why she might be in a bad mood when she wakes up. Because her fucking sister is just like, uses her as a punching bag. I couldn't believe it. Like you and I, if we we're in a big group, like not only would we never like punch down on one another, but like we're a team. You know, it's almost unfair yeah. if we're in a group because we always have each other's backs, you know? Right, right or wrong. Right or wrong, like I'm gonna defend you, you're gonna defend me, and like we're never gonna like make fun of each other. Like it was, First of all, Kyle is just like obsessed with putting Kathy down. I think because like the way the Housewives fandom became obsessed with Kathy was like historic. And I don't think Kyle particularly loved it. Um, so they all fly in. Kathy flies in separately from New York. She walks in the hotel like how a normal person looks after a flight, like fucking disheveled. And she's wearing hotel slippers. And Kyle can't get over that she's wearing hotel slippers the whole episode. Did you see Kathy's slippers? Did you see Kathy? Leave her alone. She's an old woman traveling. Like leave her alone. Seriously. Yeah. That night, they all go out to dinner. Kathy, who's like, you know, actually rich and doesn't need to like prove it by wearing a Birkin. Her purse for the night is like one of those like reusable free people shopping bags that you get from the store. Like it's, it's like one of those totes that you get when you spend like $100. It's not a purse. It's like a tote. Um, yeah. It's like I got would, the Brooklyn in one. I love it. Yeah. I have an aloe yoga one. Like the, the shit that you would throw in like to go to the gym. Yeah. 
Kyle takes the purse, is showing every, look at this, Kathy, Kathy's back. Like, just trying to embarrass her. Or do you think it's like Kyle trying to play to the fans, but getting no. it wrong? Like, no. Like how last season, everything Kathy did, like, I don't think anybody thought every single thing, like, time she did something silly or funny, it was going to be a moment. And now it's like Kyle realized that and now is trying to, like, capitalize on every one of Kathy's moments. Maybe, but it did not seem... Um, because it's like if, Ka- if Kyle didn't bring it up, then the fans would be like, oh my God, Kathy Queen, like wearing a reusable tote, like we love to see it. And so like Kyle's like injecting herself into that moment. Okay, I didn't get that energy at all, but like perhaps. Oh, I didn't watch it. I'm just, I'm just he- listening to you. And then the final thing was like, so after this dinner, they all go back to uh, the rental house and that's where Erica has this like meltdown. Um, but before that, like the women are like doing weed gummies, they're like drunk. And for sure it wasn't the right moment for Kathy to like want to talk about this, but it's clear she's not a professional house. So she don't know she doesn't know when the right time to promote a product is but she basically is talking about this tequila that she has she's like you know Paris is an investor I'm an investor Nikki and her husband James are investors um it's so good like I would love for you guys to try it like she wasn't being like calculated she was just Did she have it with her yeah Casa del Sol okay. And they're sitting around drinking. So it's like Yeah, I mean some drink. of the women have stopped drinking. A lot of them are doing pot. But like Kathy is not she doesn't she sees people drinking. She's like, "Great, perfect time to talk about my tequila." And like these women who cannot promote enough fucking things are so dismissive. No. Who wants tequila right now? Oh my god, Kathy, your timing is horrible. Like being so mean to this old lady. Like it was so sad, especially Kyle. What did she say? It got there. Like nobody wants to do that right now. Like it was so mean, especially when you think of like all the shit events all these women have to go to for their other- And the shit we have to sit through. It was so and mean. And how much tequila they drink. It was so fucking mean. And Paris actually responded to a, a tweet. Someone was like, I cannot believe how all the women just like literally dismissed the hell out of Kathy. And, and the, I think the tweet said- Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. Paris retweeted it and was like, they were so unkind. So there's definitely bad blood between Kathy and Kyle. Currently. Currently. Messed up. And then something about 818. That's next week. They order 818? Uh, my DVR cut off before the preview, so I don't know <laughs> what the 818 like thing is, but It's It seems good. like they're in a situation where Casa del Sol is offered and they order 818. That's fucked up. Yeah. Um, all right, you tell me about Southern Charm because I have about six minutes left. This is the longest episode of my life. I have six minutes left on my memory card because we're about to literally run out of storage. Because okay, I'll just so tell long. you Southern Charm, and I think I caught you guys up till Thanksgiving. Like as things are brewing between Paige and Naomi. It's so crazy how like Paige really doesn't want to come to Charleston and like be on the show. I think, and I think Craig even said this when we interviewed him. How it's like they don't enjoy doing each other's shows. He doesn't like doing Summer, Summer House because it's like a twenty four seven camera and she doesn't like doing like the group trips in his shows and I think she just doesn't like how like they operate in the south where everyone's like sweet to your face mm-hmm. and like rude behind your back where she's very much a New Yorker and it's like we're just rude 24 7. No but also like she um her job is being on a reality show and now like her private time with her boyfriend like she also has to do her job you know. Yeah but I would just think like if you're a reality star and it's more shows and that's your business like I would have just thought they'd be like yeah I'll come to Aldebrass they went to this Frank Lloyd Wright house a few weeks ago and it was actually pretty cool it was a crazy episode um and she did not go I missed her dearly but she did come to Austin's Friendsgiving like being and looking like the queen that she is she had it out with Naomi but they had made a rapprochement and everything's good then this week Patricia hosted the boys for a boys night dinner white tie at her house like French style cooking like so fucking pat and Leva had the girls at one of her restaurants for girls night and by the way I do believe Leva is getting her own yes. show Vanderpump Rules style about her restaurants which that'll I be love good that. And Leva's just becoming like a voice of reason within the group. She's not really injecting herself into the drama like she did last season. And I just, I really appreciate her energy and her advice. Like mm-hmm. she's really a great, um, she's a great gal. Mm-hmm. And Girls Night is going really, really well considering like Catherine and Naomi yeah. fucking hate each other. But Naomi is now in the show hooking up with Whitney. And like, <clears throat> I thought, I thought it was going to be like they kissed once at, like drunk after a uh, dog wedding or mm-hmm. something. But no, they're like seeing each other sort of wow. and I, I don't really hate it I mean I think Patricia would like love to have Naomi as her daughter-in-law and Whitney's like really thinks she's like the classiest woman in the world and like just worships the ground that she walks on are so, they like, still together now 
I don't think so. Oh. But if they Cute. were, I really would be here for it. And Cute. like I kind of bonded Catherine and Naomi because Catherine was like, Whitney's actually a great guy and yeah. a great catch and like really genuine. And I think like that meant a lot from Naomi to hear because I think everyone was kind of like giving her Why? shit. Why? Giving her shit. Like, yeah. Because Whitney's just it's like, weird. Kind yeah. Of, kind of weird um but when they went to this uh retreat at frank lloyd wright house it's like this you know historical landmark house of course it's like whitney's friend owns it and whitney did all the rooms and everyone's like bunking together except like he gave naomi like the choice of four different rooms <laughs> and was like taking her on a private tour like would you want that one or That's this so one sweet. it's really cute she's getting like special treatment um so when the boys were at pat's house they were so drunk it was so funny and they were genuinely having a good ass time and we only see the drama with this mm -hmm. group and it's like sometimes the drama is so loud it's like why and how are you still friends but, but then they you, like, are see you see moments like this and like they have so much fun together and it's a genuine joy to watch even Whitney is like just being so funny and Patricia fostered that for us so That's nice. I'm happy for her and I'm and I'm appreciating her more now I don't know what changed but I'm just and all her furniture is like breaking it's like, lol like the boys are like drunk in her chairs and they're you know like 16 hundred year old chair yeah Craig broke a chair then Whitney broke a chair that's actually it was really funny funny and that's why like at the end of the day like that show is good and successful because it's not a group of people who only get together to film like they are real friends with real history that was like Shaws of Sunset too rest in peace Rest in peace. So that was great. And then I just wanted to update you guys on the books that I read this weekend because I finished the historical fiction book I was reading by Beatrice I have Williams. Uh, Jackie, I have 90 seconds left on my on Oh my, my God, okay. Time. I read The Secret Life of Violet Grant. Um, amazing historical fiction book. Really long. I would give it four and a half stars, but like it pays off. If you want to like really be immersed in a story, I loved it. Then I read Jenny Mullen's book, City of Girls. Yeah. Which, I'm, I'm, okay, we are not going to do your end of recap show. Once, oh once we're done, we're okay. done. Okay. Okay. City of Girls by Jenny Mullen. It's like all about influencer mamas, mom influencers, and it was actually really good. I read it in less than 24 hours and I enjoyed it immensely. She talks so much about influencers, but I really feel like she gets it right mm -hmm. most of the time and it was really well written and really easy to read, so I would recommend. And then I just started the new Taylor Jenkins Reid book, Carrie Soda is Back, about the tennis player. So um, oh. I'm like five pages in. That's that. Okay, uh, that was our literally two year long show. Tomorrow we'll be on Burden Your... Selves. We love you all. Sorry for Bye. the delay love you today. So much. And we love you. Bye. <laughs>